Well, hello. I'm here to tell you about part four to my story. I should really call it chapter four, but um, today's part four. I'm out here by my little train that I like to do my videos at sometimes. And um, I do have some pictures to share with you. So I wanted to tell you about my best friend that I had when I was little, her name was Betsy. And this is her right here at her birthday party. And one day she was my very best friend. And one day I came home from school and um, her parents had packed up the whole house and there was a big truck in front of her house. And then um, they were all in the, the station wagon and she was in the back of the station wagon. And she was, um, she was moving to North Carolina. And I didn't know what to do. She was leaving me. She was my best friend. We used to play Barbie dolls together at her house and her mom would, uh, her mom would like bring us cookies and milk and sometimes little cheese sandwiches, little, she cut off all the, um, the part around the, the crust. She'd give us these little square cheese sandwiches with that liquid kind of cheese. It was really good. And we played Barbie dolls and it was so much fun because we were kind of like the same little characters, me and Betsy. So when she moved away and I saw her leaving, I was very devastated. And um, I started chasing after the station wagon and she was in the back of the station wagon putting her hand out, telling me bye. And I never saw her again, ever, to this very day. But I always remember her because she was so sweet, such a doll. And um, so I wanted to show you a picture of like me when I was little before I got my, I got hit in the mouth with a baseball bat. My mom was calling me one day and I ran out of the house to go see what my mom wanted. And there was somebody on the front porch swinging a baseball bat at my neighbor's house and hit me right in the mouth with the baseball bat. My tooth ended up going in my lip right here. And so this is what I look like after I got hit in the mouth with the baseball bat and it was devastating it was blood everywhere and the whole whole neighborhood chased me home to my parents house to make sure i was all right i ran right home to my mom and um so you know back then we didn't have any computers or cell phones or anything to entertain ourselves so we'd have to make our own entertainment and use paper bags or cardboard boxes or tires or they used to have those big, huge tires that you, you, for trucks, they're for diesel trucks. And we would take turns getting inside the tire and we would brace ourselves in there and then take turns rolling it down the street. And, um, you know, the tire with nothing inside of it. And so when it was my turn, you know, they always used to uh, like to pull cranks on me and stuff and tease me. So they would roll me down the street and I'd be inside the tire so I couldn't see from the outside and they were these big, huge tires. And one day they rolled me out in the street right in front of a car. And the car hit the tire and the tire went rolling and I was inside of it and they thought it was so funny. And it wasn't funny to me because it scared me to death. And then um, here's a funny picture of my sister and I at our birthday, me and my twin, blowing out our candles. And I'm proud, probably the nutty looking one. But I was, uh, here's another picture. But I was, I was uh, lacking self-esteem because of the beatings and the way I was being treated. Remember those C CB radios, those cards we had all on the walls over here? All our parents had those CB radios. And so, that was me when I was getting beat on and running for my life in that desert. So we, we were, um, here's when my sister and I were baptized. 
So anyway, what I was going to tell you is uh, the tire was one thing, and then another thing is we would go to the laundromat, and they would put me inside the dryer and keep it. They wouldn't put the heat on. They'd just keep it on cool and then push the start, and I would be bracing myself inside the dryer, and i go around and around and around inside the dryer until they stopped it. And then one time I was wondering if they were going to stop it. They all walked away with me in there trying to joke around like, you know, they weren't going to come back and let me out. But eventually they did. And then another trick we used they used to play on me would be like we would take turns um, acting like we were blind and we would lead each other, the blind leading the blind and see if the other one would trust us. And one time she, my twin sister thought I was cheating so she ran me into a car and I went BAM right into the car and I was like hey what are you doing what do you do that for and she said I thought you were cheating I wasn't cheating and I never did that to her okay and then another trick they used to like to play on me was like we would give each other take turns riding around in a shopping cart and we take it all the way to the top of the hill and then we would run down with the shopping cart with one of us inside of it, but we'd be holding on to the shopping cart all the way down the hill so it didn't go out of control. Well, when it was my turn, they ran me halfway down the hill, the same hill where I they ran me into the car. It was a parked car, but still it hurt my legs. And then um, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm just telling you about my childhood. And so anyway, when it was my turn to go down the hill, they let me go and the shopping cart went flying all the way down the hill and ran into the overpass at the bottom of the hill with me in it and they came running they thought it was so funny and then uh, let's see another time but we had a lot of fun make no mistake my sisters and I had a lot of fun together despite being chased around and beat on um, the day that my mom's boyfriend, stepdad, whatever you want to call him, Forrest, threw me out my bedroom window and I landed on the lawn in the front yard. I was around 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old, and when I was laying on the lawn in the front yard, I looked up at the window and I said to myself, I don't live there. That's not my house. And I planned on, at that very moment, running away to go find my real dad in Los Angeles which is what I eventually would do. But before that, one day, my forest, my mom's boyfriend, was beating on my little sister, and she was only four or five years old. And my mom and I were sitting there listening to this. She was down in the bedroom, and I could hear her screaming and crying and begging for help. And I asked my mom, are you going to help her? And my mom said, I can't do anything. So I said, I can. And I ran down the hall jumped on his back and bit him as hard as I could and he got up and let her go and he said you're next and I said go ahead hit me and he said you're next like he was trying to scare me and I said go ahead and he hit me on the leg and I was like that didn't hit hurt hit me again and so he just turned around and walked away and that was my first walk of shame he walked away and I grabbed my sister and walked down to the police department in Lancaster, California. And we sat there waiting for the chief of police for like five hours. And I had my little sister in my arms and she was all beat up and he pulled her hair. She had a cut on her forehead and her face and bruised up everywhere. She looked like a mess. And when he finally got there and called us into his office, you know what he said? He said, have you girls ever tried minding? Now go on and get out of here. We had to go back home. So needless to say, I had planned on running away and getting out of there. And um, I knew I was going to have to go alone. Here's another picture of us with our mom. And I knew I was going to have to do it alone and I was going to come back for my sisters. And so I did. I found a way, I used to clean this lady's house when I was like 9, 10 years old, 11 years old, 10. I ran away when I was 10. I had a little picture of my dad when he was in the Marine Corps that my mom gave me. And 
Forrest tried to scare me and try to tell me that he would beat me if I ever went and found him. But I was so miserable, like one time I ran away, way out in the desert, and I was like 10 years old, this little skinny little twig running way out in the middle of nowhere. And luckily for me, I have a guardian angel because this guy picked, found, found me and picked me up on his motorcycle on a Harley Davidson and said, go on, get on. And I was like 10 years old. I've never heard of any kind, you know. So luckily he took me and drove me to this bar out in the middle of the desert. And he went in and played a couple of games of pool. He set me up on the bar stool. And all of his friends were like, who's the little girl? What are you doing with that little girl? He's like, oh, I got to take her to my mom. She ran away. So I'm going to have to find out where she lives. So we drank a couple of beers, played a couple of games of pool. And I sat there watching him like I was totally amazed by that place. I've never been anywhere like that in my life. I was like, wow, these guys are over here playing pool and drinking beer in the middle of the daytime. Wow, what a life. So anyways, he finally took me to his mom's house way out in the desert in Rosemont or something like that. I got pretty far away and they found out who my mom was and called her and she came and got me. So they found me that time. I ran away and used to jump, jump on trains um, with my suitcase and get caught by the cops trying to run away and they'd always take me back to my mom's house. So um, this one time after I collected the money for the Greyhound bus and I was already determined and made up my mind I was running away. I was going to find my dad. I didn't want this monster beating on me or my sisters any longer. He would put us in the back of that truck and that put the camper shell the, the tailgate closed on the camper shell and we couldn't get out. The cruel and mean things that he was doing to us was unbearable and unbelievable. Uh, I was completely traumatized, it, I think, my whole life. And right now I'm telling my story because I want to try to help other people to tell their stories. And I want to get my story out there to let people know that there is hope to not give up. So. I earned the money from the lady that uh, that was that I was cleaning her house. She was in a wheelchair, and I got the eleven dollars I needed to take the bus to Los Angeles to go find my dad. So um, I did. I got the money from her. I had the plan. I stayed in my bedroom, had my things packed. I didn't tell anybody. I knew I was going to have to do it alone. And I knew I would find my dad and come back for my sisters. But I knew I wasn't coming back there. I wasn't going to live there. I just, I was just like in the sixth grade, I think. I wasn't even in junior high school yet. And I was just this little tiny 11 year old skinny little girl on a Greyhound bus with my suitcase on my way to Los Angeles to find my dad. Never to look back again and never to go back there again. It was a miracle that I actually found him. I, I actually made it to Los Angeles on the Greyhound bus. I got off the bus and I was walking. I didn't know where to go. I knew he lived on this street called Carondelet. So I knew I had to find that street. And I had a little picture. And then all of a sudden this little tiny dog started following me and the dog followed me all the way. I walked all day and I found Carondelet. I just kept asking people. And then I was walking up Carondelet looking for my dad with a little picture and you wouldn't believe what happened next. That'll be in my next edition of chapter five next Sunday. So I'll let you know then. Leave me a comment if you want to hear more. Okay? I love you all. Ta-ta. Much love.